All right, so welcome to Night Hacking at JFocus. We have our second to last interview of the conference. I'm joined by the Night Hacking regular guest, Baruch Saragorsky. Thanks for having me again. Yes, yes, always. And we're going to be we're going to be chatting about this um this mysterious three-letter acronym here. I, I have no idea what that stands for. What is that was that was the idea, right? <laughs> what is AQL, bro? Yeah, you will know by the end of the of the of the interview. How about okay, that? Okay, so it's a surprise. Yes, it is. And you you have no way to guess, right? It's really cryptic. Yeah. Well, I don't know. There's lots of acronyms it could be. Oh, and um. And we see something on the screen, well, which is a part of your bike. Well, it's a it's a nice bike. I wish I had that bike. Uh, it's not your bike. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's way too clean for my bike. Let's put it that way. <laughs> okay. So, okay. Um, do you want to show something on your computer? Yeah, it looks yeah. like. Okay. So, do you know what that is? Do I know? That looks like Artifactory. Yeah, that's right. This is Artifactory. So, um, I'm go we had a very exciting release two days ago of Artifactory 3.5. It has plenty of interesting features, but one of them I'm especially excited about. Um, binary repository, except of being a storage, which is nice, it really shines when you have a metadata about your files. Yeah. S and uh, this metadata, we already know to gather it for years from different, uh, from different uh, uh, places. So, for example, um, let's just take a look at one of the artifacts that we have here. Um, this one is just a WAR file, and uh, naturally it has properties of its own, like size and uh, when it was created, last modified, last accessed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This is kind of the metadata, and we have a special metadata which is unique to this artifact. And a couple of examples here is where, um, what was the name of the build that it was created, what was the number of the build, uh, git, commit, hash. Yeah, uh, and that all was that's created. editable, and, you can and, change the metadata. Yes, and of course we can add our own, so here is the QA status that were added by the QA team and, and what's not. Now this one I love especially. Um, this one is a good one. Some property. Black. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's that's important <laughs> knowledge about an artifact, right? <laughs> so the idea is we have tons of those properties coming in. Wait, 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 wait. So maybe it's a query language? You nailed it. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> I still don't know what the A stands for, but I got the QL. Okay, okay. That's two thirds yeah. of of I'm, uh, I'm of making it there. All right. So. Uh, you have this life cycle of an artifact. It was built and then promoted and tested, and you know, and you got closer to the release. And the question is, how do you know what to release? And those properties should, in theory, help you out. Yeah. The, pro the, the question is, how can you use them to find what you need? And since you already got the, the answer, the query language is it, what it is. Cool. So, and it's really exciting because now you have amazing power to search any metadata about any artifact in Artifactory okay. and get code? them correctly. Can I see some code? Yes, of course. So first of all, um, it's a REST API. Cool. And uh, it's a very like MongoDB query language style. Okay. It yeah. looks almost the same. So this is how you run it. Make your you, font bigger. Uh, make my font bigger. How do I do Control that? Control plus or something? Yeah, or, or something. Yeah, there you Yay. go. Yay, all right. Bigger, bigger. Bigger, bigger. Yeah, okay. Okay. that's good. You're getting there. Okay, right, so we just issue a post request and then we want the AQL. Now, this AQL, it got uh, the, the query as a parameter and I will give you a couple of examples. So, first one, we'll use the metadata I will show you earlier and this is how the query looks like. So, you can cool. see that I want to find items which have both the build name of Maven example and have the status passed as QA. Right, and then you get the results, which are basically the information about the artifacts. So we know that we found two artifacts, and one of them was jar, and the other was war, and we have this pass and, and, and everything. So this is like using the properties that we attached. Nice. But properties are not the only, uh, the only metadata. For example, the size of the artifact matters as well. So we got another example that I'm going to show you is also nice and usable, but it doesn't use the properties at all. So my query will now be, 
I want to find items in a special repository, JSON or cache, one of the names. I want to include the repo path and the size of the repositories, and I want to sort them by size. Out of those, I want the top 10, which basically means I want to get the biggest 10 artifacts in your repository. You know, you are an enterprise guy, you have an IT department sitting on you, won't let you to have too much space, right? Yeah, You're running yeah, out of space warning, so you need to find the biggest artifacts and maybe delete them, and this query can get you up and running. So here we can see that, of course, uh, Groovy. More groovy, groovy all, Groovy <laughs> all, and Groovy, JRuby, JRuby, Groovy, okay. and JRuby. So Those the are the guns. Yes, and a little bit of Tomcat. Hazelcast are pretty big. They don't, they don't listen, do they? Okay, <laughs> their problem. And uh, uh, so this is it. Uh, we are very excited uh, to have it. The, the, the nice thing yeah, about so we, it. We figured out the solution. We just have to stop using Groovy, stop using Ruby, and get rid of Hazelcast. Hazelcast. <laughs> and they still didn't listen. Still not responding. Yeah, yeah. So the, the interesting part about SQ, AQL is that we have no clue what people are going to do with that. And this is what we allow about him. And uh, we feel that the. AQL to searches, it's like user plugins to functionality. We expect people to take it beyond what we can think about. Those two examples is something that we managed to think about, but we really want to see what people are going to do with it beyond our imagination. Yeah, no, so this seems like it's quite powerful, kind of a document-based approach to querying. Yep. And so what what other sort of cool applications do you think would be applicable for the query language? Yeah, so for me, the main, uh, the main power of, of uh, this query language comes when you have a lot of metadata, which means towards the deployment yeah, of so the you artifact. Had, you had one example in there of like maybe a QA department updating it, so I bet you could integrate it with different ALM tools. Exactly, yes, yes. So for example, you can, uh, you can your deployment tool, Chef, Puppet, Ensemble, whatever, yeah. can, can query the artifacts that it need based exactly on the properties. Give me the latest artifact, but only if it fits certain quality and target platform requirements. And maybe if you're doing like continuous deployment or something, you could also mark how successful things have been in passing different stages and testing and deployments on Artifactory? Yes. yes. Perhaps. Another usage might be subsetting the artifacts for QA. So yeah. people won't have like all the world of artifacts, but only a subset of it based okay. on other properties. This yeah, kind of stuff. That should, that should but be lots uh, of fun. The thing is, we definitely don't know what so the people are going to do with that, and that's, that's exciting. So what, you know, I think one of the interesting things about all the JFrog technologies is you guys are not only supporting Java communities, but you're also using Java to implement all your stuff. So what's the, what's the underlying kind of technology behind all the new query language this stuff? Is, this is a purely Java implementation, although we made it feel like MongoDB style of queries. Yeah. They are just translated to a normal JDBC SQL queries because all the information, all the metadata that we talk about in Artifactory, it's all stored in a relational database, and the queries are essentially queries on the well-defined indexes in JDBC, in JDBC. So it's all pure Java. It uses uh, Spring uh, JDBC uh, capabilities, and uh, we just make it look a little bit fancier, you know, hipster yeah, style. Yeah, more stylish. But, but it's all <laughs> hardcore Java under the hood. <laughs> Very nice. And have you already given your talk here? Yes, I'm done with my talk a couple of hours ago. Yeah, how does that go? I, I believe it was I, in 2012. I, I, threw, I threw money on the, on the you, audience. You threw money. So hopefully Why wasn't it was in your well. talk then? Uh, but no one cares what the talk was about once they, I they threw money on the audience. The it was about the complicated HTTP concurrent asynchronous stuff. Cool. But trust me, the only thing people will remember is their the own money. money. The money. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, now you've set an expectation here for money, and I think you're probably out. We will see next year. <laughs> Definitely we'll see. Cool. All right. Thanks very much, Barbara. Thank you very much for, ha for having me, and see you next time, which will be soon. Yeah. Okay. And join us for the last night hacking presentation of the day. We're going to have Atili Svegedi to talk about NASORN performance. And that will be at 250.
p.m. Central European time. Attila so, is someone worth listening. Yeah, he's he's really smart. Yep, makes me makes me feel um like a young Java developer. Yeah, that, that is so fun <laughs> to listen to smart people without understanding what exactly. they uh, what they are talking. The whole uh, VM day that they had here before Yeah, that J-Focus, was awesome. The VM Tech Summit. It was so much fun. You you sit in the crowd, you understand nothing, and it feels so good. <laughs> nice. Thanks. <laughs>